Horror franchises are billion dollar industries and they often do very little to change their formula or present something new. However, there will occasionally be a sequel that stands out. These follow-ups either disregard the rules of their own franchises or the expected rules of sequels in general. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 horror movie sequels that broke all the rules. Number 10, Army of Darkness. Army of Darkness chooses to pick up directly where Evil Dead 2 left us and follows Bruce Campbell's Ash as he tries to return to his own time after becoming trapped in the Middle Ages. Consequently, Army of Darkness is pretty much a blend of every genre you can think of. The film mixes the standard horror elements with heavy fantasy, romance, comedy, and even some historical period drama to boot. Audiences then, expecting the usual Cabin in the Woods fodder, were shocked by lush gothic production design and huge scale battle sequences between an army of deadites and and medieval knights. Hell, there's even rare Harryhausen-style stop-motion thrown in for good measure. It's all held together by Bruce Campbell's signature performance, but otherwise this is such a mad departure all around from what came before. Number 9, Doctor Sleep. Doctor Sleep could have gone two ways. As a sequel to Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, it could have continued where that movie left off, reveling in the same universe that famously made many changes from Stephen King's original novel. It also could have ignored that movie entirely, instead adapting the Doctor Sleep novel and sticking more faithfully to King's story. In the end, however, it kinda did both. The film is at once a lavish love letter to the original movie, recreating scenes outright, relying on the movie's original creations and cinematic language, and delivering a finale that leans heavily on nostalgia. At the same time though, it completely flies in the face of that movie's own rules and story, here putting the focus overtly on supernatural vampire-like beings who live for hundreds of years and get their murder on. What's Left is a weird movie that tries to blend the incongruous takes of both Kubrick and King while also finding room to establish its own identity. It doesn't quite work, but we definitely won't be seeing a sequel slash adaptation like it anytime soon. Number 8, Saw 3. Saw 3 follows Jeff as he's put through a series of life or death traps involving those responsible for his son's death. At the same time, the dying jigsaw killer abducts a doctor and holds her hostage, tasked with keeping him alive until the game is complete. Saw 3 absolutely swings for the fences and this time around genuinely no one is safe, a trait that would admittedly continue throughout later films but not as effectively. The movie mercilessly kills beloved characters like Detective Alison Carey and Amanda Young, leaving the viewer in utter shock. Perhaps Saw 3's most unique trait though is that it kills the franchise's primary villain as its parting shot. John Kramer is violently murdered in the last scene, and unlike other horror franchises, this serves as a real death. There's no getting struck by lightning or getting peed on here. He's brought back in flashbacks, yes, but killing off the series villain for good less than halfway through the franchise is still something most producers would find unthinkable. So at the end of this movie, every character we know is either dead or left in peril and the viewer can only scream, where could it go from here? Number 7, Basket Case 3, The Progeny. 1991's Basket Case 3 had a very big task on its hands if it was to outdo the bizarre outlandishness of the previous two films, and guess what? It succeeds. The film follows franchise staples Dwayne and his twin Belial along with their community of friends as they travel cross country where Belial's love Eve will birth their children. Basket Case 3 has a plot that gets more and more ridiculous with each passing moment though, and just when you think it can't get any stranger, well it absolutely does. The movie abandons the more traditional horror elements elements present in the first two flicks, and instead plays as a ridiculous farcical comedy with some occasional gore that's complete with an out of the blue musical number. The movie tops itself in outlandishness however when it opts to parody the Terminator, giving Belial a metal exoskeleton. He then battles police who have taken his newborns hostage and, well, it's a time. No one involved in Basket Case 3 is taking it seriously and it just makes the viewing experience all the more enjoyable. Number 6, The Human Centipede 2, Full Sequence. 2009's The Human Centipede first sequence earned praise from critics for its daring concept, but also its surprisingly restrained telling of what could have been a very explicit tale. The 2012 sequel, however, pulls back on all of that restraint for better or worse. To say that the full sequence is a strong contender for one of the most disturbing films ever made then is no exaggeration. Here, everything is shown in graphic detail, from the intricate surgery sequences to downright vile scenes of sexual assault. This full sequence 
truly lives up to that name and delivers depravity in spades. What cements it as a rule breaker though is the way it recontextualizes the original film. This is a meta story about a man so obsessed with the previous Human Centipede movie that he opts to make his own, acting as something of a cautionary tale of how certain films may influence a disturbed mind. Number 5. Hello Mary Lou from Night 2 Hello Mary Lou Prom Night 2 tells the darkly comic tale of Mary Lou Maloney, a high school bad girl who goes up in flames just as she receives her prom queen crown in 1957. Thirty years later, her vengeful spirit targets the naive Vicky for possession to take out those responsible and finally claim her crown. Mary Lou though is about as far from its slasher predecessor as a movie can get, as the concept is completely abandoned in favour of a much more tongue-in-cheek ghost tale. Admittedly though, the shift to a more comedic tone is somewhat refreshing, as by 1987 the slasher subgenre was becoming tired and oversaturated. And even then, although this movie appears to begin as light ghostly fun, it ultimately shocks with some incredibly explicit nudity and equally gnarly gore effects. Genre fans will want to check this one out too for an understated performance by the legendary Michael Ironside who is always awesome without fail. Number 4, Halloween 2018. I think you all knew this one was coming. The sequel that took a tired franchise and brought it roaring back to life, 2018's mega hit Halloween stands as a direct sequel to the 1978 film of the same name. The movie follows Halloween survivor Laurie Strode as she faces down Michael Myers yet again in a confrontation she has spent four decades preparing for. Now, this wasn't the first time a movie had ignored previous canon. Hell, it's not even the first Halloween movie to do that either, but it was one of the first to do it so extensively and so drastically. This installment dared to wipe the slate clean of all previous character motivations and connections established over 40 long years. It was, as you can imagine, an absolute huge risk, but it ultimately paid off to make the truest, simplest sequel that we had for decades. No longer tied down by complicated familial bonds or druid cults, Michael Myers effortlessly reclaims his status as a motiveless boogie band. Number 3. The Town That Dreaded Sundown, 2014 Announced as a remake of the 1976 cult classic of the same name, genre fans were rather shocked to discover that it's actually a sequel of sorts. The movie takes us to the town of Texarkana, where a sack-clad killer again stalks lovers' lanes searching for victims. This raises the question, has the phantom killer returned, or is it a sick fan obsessed with the town's legacy and the movie that it inspired? That's right, the town that dreaded sundown goes super meta and focuses on the lives of those in Texarkana following the years of unwanted publicity generated by the 1976 movie. Residents are shown to absolutely resent this film, fearing it will one day bring blood shed upon their town once again. The writing is admittedly inspired here, tying the cult following of the 1976 film into the horrific true events that the first flick was based on. Sadly, outside of this premise, the movie admittedly isn't all that awesome, and sadly nobody bothered to even see it, but it's still an intriguing piece of work that deserves your time. Number 2. Wreck 3 Genesis after the runaway success of the original two Wreck movies, many were eager to see a continuation of that story. However, this third instalment completely dupes the viewer before savagely pulling the rug out from under them. That's because it begins as you would expect in the usual found footage style, but then 20 minutes into the picture the found footage aspect is just dumped when the wedding videographer drops his camera. After this, Genesis boldly decides to just drop the first person perspective entirely and instead plays out like a much more traditional film. Here we have Lush photography, a choral score, and absolutely huge gory set pieces filmed from multiple angles with a hint of Evil Dead Camp to boot. Director Paco Plaza wanted to widen the scope of the series by dropping the core framing and introducing more humorous elements and certainly accomplished that, however as you can imagine, it wasn't to every fan of the original's tastes. Number 1. Wes Craven's New Nightmare New Nightmare at the time was unquestionably a breath of fresh air for a series that had gone very stale. Wanting to break away from the wisecracking media titan that Freddy had become, Wes Craven took the bold step of bringing his creation into the real world, framing the original Nightmare as a movie within a movie. The idea that the real Freddy is now an ancient evil that has endured for centuries is certainly an intriguing one. Craven, along with actor Robert Englund, builds this incarnation of the character as being much more sinister, even more so than 
than he was in the first movie. New Nightmare in general has an undeniable sense of grandeur to it, playfully acknowledging fans' investment in the previous lore while presenting something that reframes everything that came before through an at the time groundbreaking meta lens. This movie broke every single rule of an established and beloved franchise and played around with conventions in a way that Wes Craven would fully embrace going into screen. So that's our list. Let's know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any horror movie sequels that broke rules like these lot that I missed off? And do you enjoy any of the flicks on this list? Either way, while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to What Culture Horror for more videos like this on the regular. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you soon.